Chris Robbins, Councillor Susie Douglas, also a mayoral candidate, Councillor Eddie Saroff, Councillor Peter Young, also a mayoral candidate, David Power, Dave's already here. Also Harley Day. Harley Day is a senior town planner from council. Harley, could you stand up so people can see you? Now, this man will be available after the meeting to answer any of your queries about the process, the town planning process, the significant project process. He's here courtesy of Gold Coast City Council. So thank you, Harley. Uh, Katie Scott, who's here representing Jan Stuckey. Keith Maitland, who's a candidate for the Gold Coast City Council. Keith. Lois Levy, has Lois arrived yet from Gecko? Yes. Welcome, Lois. And Rose Adams from Gecko. And Sharon Polka, representing Gwyn Garner. Apologies this evening from Karen Andrews. Um, the Green Senator Sarah, uh, Larissa Waters. Jan Stuckey. Ros Bates. Local state members. Mayor Ron Clark. And Councillors Shepherd, Grummond, Gates. For Critchlow and the Cashman. If I could also introduce the members of our committee to you, my name is Rob Belander. I'm a local resident of down in Talabadra Valley, I'm also a local solicitor, and I'm a, a member of the uh, committee forming our group. The other members are Tony Davis, Tony from the Observatory, Lorraine Cook, and of course, where's the famous Sam? Sam Stewart. Up the back, everyone knows Sam. You're a popular man, Sam. I'd also like to read, she's asked me to read her letter, Jan Stuckey's letter. Jan has been a stalwart supporter of our group and has helped us enormously. Um, and she'd asked me especially to read her letter out, which I'll do. Parliamentary engagements prevent me from being here this evening as we head into a final sitting of the parliamentary year. However, I wish to reassure you that my commitment to represent your views is unswerving. It was almost one year ago that the residents expressed their strong and vocal opposition to the proposed moral quarry as the expected and disheartening news broke just before the business Christmas period. Since that time, much has occurred with the formation of the Action Group, public meetings, launch of the petition, subsequent tabling of the petition which attracted over 9,200 signatures in the Queensland State Parliament. These are all significant milestones that residents and Action Group members should feel proud to have accomplished. Stakeholders from the Stop the Gold Coast Quarry Group met the opposition leader, Jan organised this, and the Shadow Minister for State Development and Infrastructure. Very recently, Jeff Seney MP on the 15th of November and presented a strong case on residents' behalf. Jeff Seney gave an undertaking that he would look into the concerns that were raised by the group at that meeting, particularly in relation to whether the actions of the State Government and other parties had been fair and proper during the initial processes. Thursday last week, I met with representatives from Borough as part of my ongoing commitment to raise the concerns of local residents with them, and they committed to keeping me informed of any developments. It would appear the EIS process, which we'll talk about this evening, will take up to another, will take up to 15 months to complete. This week in the State Parliament, I shall ask further questions on notice on your behalf to secure information regarding the process that led to this situation, and I will continue to represent your views on this important issue. My best wishes for Christmas and the New Year, Jan Stuckey, MP, Member of Corona. Thank you, Jan. A bit about the process this evening too, folks, uh, and about the agenda. Um, I'll just give you an overview of the agenda before I pass over to Tony to talk about the process. The agenda this evening will, will be, firstly, Tony will talk about the process. <laughs> then um, we will deliver a presentation giving an overview of what's happened in the last, uh, last year starting with events starting in the early 2000s, taking it right through to today, where the State Government have commissioned an environmental impact statement, an EIS as we call it. And then we will uh, pass over to Lorraine Cook. Lorraine will talk to you about our many meetings we've had with a lot of people over since we last met in April. We have been all over the place. Um, we've been to Canberra, we've met a lot of politicians and, and important people to raise the profile of this issue for the area. We're aiming to talk about that. Um, then we'll present to you our submission. We've done a lot of research on this. Uh, we had uh, strong suspicions about this whole thing when Borrell called the meeting. Who was here? Uh, who was on the Gold Coast? Who came to the meeting in December of last year? Yeah, okay. You remember Borrell telling us this was a done deal? Yep, and get on board, otherwise we'll just get the quarry they want rather than the one we want. Um, 
we'll take it back to that, and we'll, we, we've, we've, we were very suspicious after that. Um, we've come across a lot of stuff which we'll share with you tonight. We don't have any suspicions anymore. We are confident that the state government has misled us. That's what we want to say to you loud and clear. We'll pass it, and then we'll call for questions. Questions from your good selves. We'd like to hear questions or any comments you have to make as residents. We've asked you to come here. Uh, and then we're going to give Christine Smith on behalf of the Queensland Government and as your member from Burley the chance to respond. Um, this is not a witch hunt. Um, we would like to get this solved. We want this quarry stopped. So Christine's here to talk to us about that. Michael Hart will then on behalf of the LNP and as a candidate standing against Christine in her seat, uh, give the officer view, or it is his view anyway. Sorry, I shouldn't have predetermined that. Thank you, Michael. Um, and then we might wrap up with some, some, uh, some overview of the whole thing from the committee and where we see it. What to do from here? What do we actually do from here? You'll see on your seats there uh, there's an action list. We'll talk about that some more. So for the next few minutes, I'll pass over to Tony. Hi everyone, thank you for coming to 
tonight. It's really good to see your faces. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what's happened. Um, it's a little bit hard because there's a computer up there that actually has to be operating, so I might have to bounce back and forth, so I appreciate your patience. To give you some idea on what we've discovered um, and what's been told to us over the last year, we learned, as Rob said, uh, on the 20th of November last year that we were going to get a quarry, and uh, basically we better get used to it because that's, that's what works best uh, for the proponent. After that, uh, we went chasing a few bits, and we came across what we call coral myths. The first myth being they don't delay for 15 to 20 years. We discovered within a few days they don't, they bought it in December 2005. We had letters from uh, an ally uh, indicating that it had been identified in the early 2000s as a quarry, though we hadn't met anyone who'd heard of it. In 2005, it was uh, indicated on the Southeast Queensland Regional Plan as a purple dot in a 200-page document with no textual reference whatsoever. This was informing us of its existence. Council never did anything in relation to that. 2007, we had the release of State Planning Policy 2-07, the protection of extractive resources. Gravel is more important than you. They protect gravel. They're not protecting you or me. That's not good. It was confirmed as the KRA, KRA 96, that came into effect with that policy in September 2007. Then it was indicated on the Southeast Queensland Regional Plan 2009. Again, anyone here saw that? Must have been the best seller, that book. No one saw it. Again, it was a purple dot. There was no reference to it, no textual reference to it. So when did we learn about it? We learned about it when it was designated a significant project a year ago, on the 19th of November last year, when I'd never actually heard of significant projects before. I'd certainly never heard of a quarry being one. To me, significant projects are airports, ports, major, major stuff, not quarries. But this is one big quarry. This is 540 acres. Probably one, if not the biggest quarry in Queensland, if it goes ahead. But it won't affect any of you guys, because it's far enough away that it's not going to do any harm. I disagree. In February of this year, um, the Department of Infrastructure released the terms of reference, the, the draft terms of reference, which gave us a six-week period to respond to, to ask them to include extra things. We responded to it, but we do not agree with the process. We believe the significant process is incorrect when it comes to quarries. And we told Adam Lai this, we told Andrew Fraser this, we told Kate Jones this. Not good enough. Their answer? Their answer was really good. Andrew Fraser wrote a letter back to us that we got on the 6th of April, telling us to respond to the draft terms of reference that closed four days before. This is the treasurer of Queensland. Does he do this with everything? Not good enough. Don't you agree? If you employed someone who did that, would he still have a job with you? If you're an employer, to me that's incompetence. But it was followed a week later by Kate Jones's letter, also suggesting I write to the bathroom for public reference, two weeks after it closed. This is what this is who is leaving our state. This is who is setting the direction of our states. We're not looking after our interests, at least not in my view. The terms of reference were released on the 1st of August. Okay? So Borrow has now started its EIS process, Environmental Impact Statement process. And Andrew Fraser, in a letter from Andrew Fraser and also from the Premier, the indication was that that would be completed by mid-2012. Okay? That's seven to eight months away. Jan's letter has said it now seems to be longer. But the only person who benefits of this taking longer is Borrow. Because for us to keep up our passion and to keep fighting this is important. The longer it takes to get through the process, the better their chances of winning. Okay? Now, um, if I go past, if I go a little bit um, further past that, some of the other issues that have come up. One of the big issues that came up is the amount of workers that this quarry will employ. And this is something I want to get into context. West Burley Quarry. First of all, we don't have a problem with quarries. We have a problem with where quarries should be. 
Okay, where's the Bailey Quarry that in theory Boral says employs up to 100 people? On records we have, we're employing 16. Their claims are developing up to 390 jobs on the Gold Coast. Those 390 jobs either already exist now or they've never existed. But putting another quarry across the road isn't going to change that. And if Boral never get this new quarry, there's plenty of other quarries in Narang and Ormo and Stapleton and everywhere else that I'm sure will be only too happy to take up the slack when it comes to supplying gravel. Scarcity. This material is not scarce. We'll go into this later uh, today. But the concept of um, we'll have problems or house prices will go up, this is untrue. There is only one company talking about scarcity here, and that's the proponent for this poll. No one else is. Have you heard anyone else back them up? Have you heard the other big three say, we agree there's not enough rock? No, because they know that's not the truth. Anyway, so what have we done? February last year we started with our petition, 9,200 signatures. Okay? Which is awesome. I think the nearest thing to that was probably the spit. Uh, Lois, what were the numbers on the spit? 30,000. 30, but that was a big, that was probably the biggest one on the Gold Coast, yeah? Okay? Yeah? Okay, so our little quarry, we got 9,000 people, we're doing not too bad at all for the first time we've ever done it. We went to the community cabinet, we spoke with the Premier, we spoke with the Treasurer, we spoke with the Coordinator General, and we spoke with Kate Jones, and basically all we got was lip service. Okay? It was a nice day out, lots of people wore red. Thank you to all of those who came. Okay? I hope you enjoyed the day. We had our May Day event um, on the 1st of May. We weren't saying May Day, May Day, this is great, this is a Labor Day. We were saying May Day, May Day, we were in trouble. And people have to understand that they have to stand up and the politicians, those in power, have to hear us and have to respond to our requests, our demands to stop these types of projects. On the 11th of May, we were mentioned in Federal Parliament by Karen Andrews, a member for McPherson, and Jan Stuckey on the same day. That's quite amazing for this little quarry and little valley in the southeast of Queensland. In May, we also incorporated uh, one of the things we had to do because we had to stand alone. Uh, we have to fight this fight as about a quarry. So we need your help, we need your support financially as well to help us get this message through. Today, it's been very much funded by the committee members and some small donations, but it's going to get more expensive as we wrap the service up. We completed the terms of reference um, for the Borough Quarry as well, which is a 77 page document. Um, and if you read all of that, and if they actually have to follow all of that and meet all the requirements, there's no way known this quarry could ever happen. But of course, there'll be some get out of jail free cards given here. They'll get away with things because it's a significant project that they would never get away with in any other way. So, I thank you. Two other things, sorry, one other thing. We did invite them. We emailed them, the same as we invited them the last time. The first time they rejected us. The second time we didn't even get an answer. So, uh, are they listening to us? I doubt it. We know they're still talking to uh, members of parliament. We know they're still talking to our people in council. So they're out there, they're just not talking to us. So their claim of transparency is false. Get used to it. They're not going to talk to us because they think we have no input in this manner. Thank you. So, you'll understand now why when Sam, uh, the Premier said to Sam at the Cabinet meeting, Sam, uh, after a big round of applause, we're all very popular here, I understand that he did say back to him, why he said back to him, yes Premier, and you're not. <laughs> Thank you for your courage, Sam. <laughs> That's our friend Sam Stewart. Thank you very much. Um, the committee, our committee, um, we're just residents. Um, one year ago, we didn't even know each other. Um, and now we've become friends. The passion for the cause has, has made us friends. And I'm going to pass you over to our, now to our friend Lorraine Cook, who's going to talk about all the people we've met.
Neither, might I say, are either any of us a member of a political party or ever have been a member of a political party.
This report highlights that mines must provide a 2K buffer zone. 2Ks. Try walking into my mind. So how come that doesn't apply to quarries in residential areas? How come? Because if it did, there wouldn't be a quarry going ahead in Talabajra. We spoke to Councillor Chris Robbins, Greg Betts, Eddie Sarah. On state government, we spoke to the Leader of the Opposition, Jeff Seeney, who stated that after a thorough brief, he gave us a lot of time, which we truly appreciate. His exact words were, this appears most unfair, and stated he would research the matter now most thoroughly. MP Karumba, Jan Stuckey, who doesn't know Jan, referred to affectionately as a bulldog. Jan is a ferocious opponent to any aspect of this proposed new body. On our behalf, she submitted many questions to Parliament and is awaiting answers. Her support has been tireless. Her introduction is impressive at the highest level of government. All greatly respected and appreciated. MP Marjorie Barr, Ross Bates. Ross Bates just, I've got some extra notes on Ross, she's just done something that is really important to us, but let's just say, she's always got a hand up for support and assistance whenever we call on her. And she's a staunch opponent to this proposed quarry, suffocating not just one, but many neighbourhoods around the prison. She conducted an opinion poll in the Reedy Creek and Observatory area just recently, which I'm sure a lot of you have not taken in. And she got an unprecedented 75% response. I come from a background in direct marketing, 3% is something to get excited about. 5% we celebrate. She got 75%. 75% of people said no. Okay, that's pretty big. She's presenting it to Parliament tomorrow and she's writing a letter to Anna Bly to fill her in as to how we really think and feel. We've had many sessions with Christine Smith. We've spoken to the Shadow Attorney General, Janet Bly. The candidates, Michael Hart, Craig Walker, mayoral candidates, David Powell, Susie Douglas, Tom Tate, Peter Young. These people are all saying, this car is wrong. It stinks. But then two of our members decided to go to Canberra just to make sure that they knew what was going on as well. So Sam and Rob took off. And they went to see, I'll come back to Karen in a minute, they went to see the Senator for Queensland, Larissa Waters. They saw Shadow Minister for the Environment, Greg Hunt, who was a very they saw Shadow Parliamentary Secretary Simon Birmingham. They had time with Senator Queensland Ian MacDonald. But one of our champions from federal government is Karen Andrews. So while I'm involved in initiating this quarry at state level, at the end of the day, whether you know it or not, Canberra are the ones that will sign off on this. Karen Andrews has ushered us through a minefield of pitfalls and we are forever humbled by her support. But we'd like to also make special mention here that the Honourable Tony Burke MP, our current Federal Minister for Sustainability, is a quarry sustainable, environment, water, population and communities. He's a very busy man and perhaps that's why he chose to refuse any time with us at all. Just flatly refused. We did meet, as Sam said, um, and, and got a hearing from our by Deputy Premier Andrew Fraser and MP Ashmore Kate Jones, but no surprises there. They weren't exactly giving us too much encouragement about anything. So that's it. That's a wrap on my information. Thank you. And over to Rob.
Now, we want to do this so that you all get the bigger picture uh, and what you've been reading in the media, what we were talking about tonight, what you've heard. Um, it will bring it all together for you. This will crystallise all this, all this stuff we've been talking about. So that's the purpose of doing it. Thank you. Well, there she is. That's the quarry site. Massive, isn't it? 550 acres. How would you like that in your backyard? Unless we fight this, that's what we're going to have in our backyard. The stats are, this is, and this is from Borrell's own site, the stats this is going to generate, this quarry, will be one 20 ton truck every 60 seconds. One 20 ton truck every 60 seconds going on or off the M1 12 hours per day, six days per week for 40 years. The history, so the history of quarries is too, that after the quarry operation finishes, they become landfill for another best part of 40 years. So that, if it proceeds, will become a life sentence for all the people. And look at all the communities affected by it. Kingsmore, Reedy Creek, the observatory. I and mean, you wonder whether the observatory would even be there if you know about this. Um, old Burley Town, West Burley, Talabaja, Talabaja Valley. Um, it's just thousands of families, thousands of people are affected by that proposal. Thank you, Sam. There's a blow up of it. We showed that to Greg Hunt, the Federal Minister for Environment. Uh, very smart man. Because um, he agreed with us. <laughs> um, he just looked at it after five minutes and he said, This is an oasis. I think I remember his words right, Sam. This is an oasis of green in a major, in a big urban area. And instinctively, this is wrong. That's what he said after five minutes. You should have heard what he said after about 30, 40 minutes. Thank you, Sam. That's a blow up of the zoning, basically, in old fashioned jargon. The zoning map. We don't have signs anymore. But it, that's what it basically is the old type of zoning map. It shows the zoning of the land now. That land is now zoned open space, uh, park living, which is uh, rural acreage, and a bit of residential. That's what it's zoned as today. But the Queensland government, without dis disclosing to us, uh, as residents, and without consulting us, changed the designation of that in 2506. This now appears in the South East Queensland Regional Plan. That now has a status of what they call a KRA, a Key Resource Area. So when you hear that jargon, that has it is a Key Resource Area called extract, Extractive Industry. That means quarry. That's what has been designated. Now that is, that is a very important designation. You need to understand that the effect of that designation by the state government without consulting, without disclosing, except for the purple dot that appeared in the 200 page document that Tam, Sam mentioned before. That was the only disclosure. Um, and one of those cabinet ministers that Lorraine mentioned had the audacity to say to us, yeah, but your council got that. Oh, come on, 200 pages, the purple dot. Thank you, Sam. This area has um, is a recognised bio, what they call a biodiversity corridor. It's a lot of uh, environmental speak, really, but that is a that is a serious uh, that is a major uh, a major environmental importance. The quarry is right in the middle of what we call a biodiversity corridor. That runs, folks, all the way from Burley Heads right the way through to the World Heritage listed area, Springbrook. Um, now, this also has status under international conventions. One, those of you who are environmentalists will know you've heard of something called Ramsar. It's a big convention that occurred in the Middle East back in the 70s. This, this, this site, this all is linked up to this. This has a major environmental status, this, this environmental corridor. You, you put a 550-acre quarry in there, that will savage that world. Maybe that's an exaggeration. It'll ruin the integrity of it. Thank you, Sam. Now this is a, a geology map. This is a geology map that is uh, done by a man, Sam will remember his name, uh, a famous geologist, geologist. This is all that purple stuff there you see. Can you all see the purple stuff on the map? That's the that's an area from which you can extract a grey wave. That's the predominant rock you can get from that area. You see how big that area, that purple area is? That's the area from which uh, people can draw grey wave. Big resource, big rock that uh, that the owner of the site is hoping to extract from it. Why are they pushing 
This site can be approved as a quarry, we believe, because it's so close to the M1. It's so cheap to move the rock from the quarry to M1. Normally, quarries are way out in, 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 in our areas. Um, for your information, um, in that area, there are about 12 approved quarries already. I just want to stress that. There's about 12 approved quarries already. This is not me saying this. You go to Gold Coast City Council, Extractive Industry Site, and you'll find this sort of data there. Four of those sites, four of those quarries alone have more than enough capacity to service the needs of the Gold Coast City Council area, even with the Commonwealth Games, for the next, how many years do you think? 50 years. Got it? So, apart from all the, all the town planning and environmental issues, traffic, noise, dust, amenity, environment, lifestyle, values of your property to say nothing, what does that do to the value of the property? Apart from all of that, um, there just is no need for this quarry. I just want to say that again. There is no need for this quarry. There's plenty of quarries already out there. Thank you, Sam. So this is our submission. We first heard about this in uh, November 28, 2010, when Borrell called a meeting, one week's notice, called all the residents. 300 of us turned up, a lot of you were there, and that's when they told us, this has been approved, these were the words, this quarry has been approved by the government. You better get on board and, and work with us and we'll give you the best quarry we can. If you don't, we will just give you whatever quarry we, uh, we design. 300 people got pretty upset, remember it? <laughs> um, they told us, the one of the words they used were it was a done deal. We were suspicious, you know, and that's what they said. They could have, how do we know, they could have been talking that up yet. They could have been bluffing. Uh, maybe they're telling the truth though. So off we went to research. Two reasons initially for our suspicions. Firstly, the designation of the site in 2005, uh, under the south, which is now in the South East Queensland plan, as extractive industry. That was the first thing. Now the consequence of that for you is very important. You must understand that the importance of that, if that stays, if that remains, one of the things we're asking the government is to cancel that. Because if that stays next year, when the Gold Coast City Council look at its new town plan, which they must introduce, right? Once they review their town planning scheme next year, because this has this designation, it has to be picked up. They have no choice. They have to, state law overrides local government law. They have to pick this up as a quarry. For that, for us folks, and my committee members hate me saying this, but for us, that is, this one for the media, that is death by a thousand cuts. We're gone. We've been set up. That's the first reason we were suspicious. Second reason was, Tam, Sam mentioned it, in December last year, the state government called this project in. That's the jargon here. They called it in. That is, they took it out of the control of the level of government closest to the people. I mean, you know, I think we're going to get the fairest deal here if the local council decide this matter. They took it out of their control. They took it on themselves, designated it as a significant project. That means all due process is gone, folks. Um, for those lawyers in the audience, there's no what's called judicial review. The, uh, there's no opportunity of a citizen to challenge a government's administrative decision under the Judicial Review Act. There's no right to appeal if we're unhappy with the decision to an independent umpire, like a local government judge. Um, all that was gone. All power now is with the Queensland government under the, the officer in control who makes the decision is the Coordinator General and his political master is the Treasurer of so you can jump up and down all you like about the coalition politicians and the council, they have no say. The say is with the state government. We're going to ask Christine Smith to respond. Um, we've made a couple of submissions to Christine now about this. So the process starts once commissioned as a, once, once classified as a significant project. The process starts on what's called an environmental impact statement, EIS. Now that just sounds, sounds terrific really. And a 77 page document in terms of reference came out about it all. It looked really good. But it's just window dressing we believe folks. Uh, we think they've already made up their mind because of these two things here. We were very suspicious that they made up their mind after those two things here. But we've now uncovered a bit of clear evidence which puts it beyond any doubt in our minds that they've already made up their mind, which we'll get to shortly. The EIS, so you understand, um, apart from taking all control back to the state government, apart from getting rid of due process, no independent umpire, 
they make the decision. Um, apart from all that, <coughs> uh, it's a pretty messy process. It's a, we call it a, basically a tick box process. Um, those people in town planning, when you talk to them, they'll, 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 they'll share, they share the same view. It's, it's, it's not a fair dinkum process. It's, a, it's basically it's, it's one that it's just a tick box requirement. You produce the EIS, and Bar will have at least 12 months to do this environmental impact statement. And we have, where's Sam? How many weeks do we have to respond, Sam? It's only weeks. Now, that is not an indication that they've stacked this against you. What is? And the terms of reference, of course, are their rules they determine. Thank you, Sam. We can move through. Bond University, by the way, on, on their own initiative, and without, without any request from us, Bond University commissioned their own report, the Sustainable Deva Development Department, the Advanced Students Commission, their own volition, a report into this site about whether it was sustainable. They presented us a copy of the report. We didn't even know about it until they were very close. And the report found that there was no basis for this, as a, this, for this project being sustainable. It's not sustainable on any basis, whether we're talking traffic, noise, amenity, environment, uh, dust. And the dust we're talking about here, folks, is silica dust. This is not dust from living up the backyard. This is carcinogenic dust. Thank you, Sam. We presented that report to the Queensland Government and it has been ignored. Okay, here's the rub now. This is what I've noticed. Uh, this has firmed up our suspicions. We don't have any now. We believe we've been misleading. This is the reason. You'll see at the back, on the boards at the back there, some stuff we uncovered um, covered a little while ago, but it's only been in the last couple of weeks that we realised the importance of this material. This is stuff we got from the Queensland Government under uh, Right to Information, or it used to be called Freedom to Information. Some of you never know about it. We uncovered a lot of stuff, but three really important things. We uncovered a plan which showed that we don't know exactly when, but have a look at the plan. We've highlighted it for you in the back. It shows um, the upgrade of the Bermuda Street. It's part of the upgrade of the Bermuda Street extension. And it shows clear major access to the borrow lands. We've highlighted it for you. So you can see on one side into the place, there's, a, there's two lanes entry. And it's, and it's the borrow land. It's got the borrow resources side on it. That's the first bit we got. Um, and on the other side, it looks, when you, it's not done to scale, but it looks like it's three lanes out. And why do you need such massive access to a site like this unless you're going to develop for, for what? <coughs> Getting the picture. We also, on the board there as well, we uncovered uh, an email which has got traffic data. This is this, that, that does have a date on it. That's May 2010. Remember the government? Borrell told us this about in December, this in December 2010. Right, November, December 2010. That's the first we knew about it. You do searches of this, you do searches of this area even today with the state government and the council. You can't find out about the, this proposed Borrell site, uh, this quarry site. We found out about it in December when they told us. But the, the stuff in the back of the room we got under right to information shows that in May 2010, at least, there's emails between these state government officers. And the heading is traffic data, borrow, uh, borrow. Access bot, there's another one, a PDF attached, we've got it up there. They gave it to us. PDF access borrow borrow. Have a look at it. No wonder it, that's just firm up on our suspicions. So we believe this has been on the government's agenda for years. We don't know exactly how long, but it's a number of years. And it has confirmed. We thought borrow might have been bluffing, they might have been talking it up, but we believe, well, I think they were telling the truth. It's a done deal. They've approved it, the government's approved it. Thank you, Sam. There's a bigger picture that's on the back wall as well. Uh, that's the upgrade of the Ministry extension. We went to a meeting. It's embarrassing to tell you these things, but we went to a meeting, Sam and I, a couple of weeks ago, uh, put on by a council and, more importantly, um, state government, Department of Transport and Main Roads, engineers from this department. And we, Sam and I, asked them the question, have, is any part of your brief to this? It was on this road, on the Bermuda Street extension, and it was labelled um, Information Session uh, Preservation of Corridor, Old Coach Road. Pretty, some of you are probably there. So we went along thinking, we'll ask them a few questions about the access to the Laurel site. We asked them, is, has, 
is any part of your brief to look at access to the viral site? No, was the answer. Uh, have you looked at that in any way, access to the viral site, as part of the upgrade of this road? Emphatic no, no, definitely not was the answer. That we now know to be incorrect. Well, don't take my word for it. Have a look at the stuff we've got on the back of the wall. You make up your own mind, see for yourself whether you agree with that statement. We think that we think that meaning there are many good many good things that could come from upgrading the ministry uh, ministry extension for sure. But the reason they started the project now uh, is we believe the main reason is to get access to that site. When you see these plans, that'll be your opinion too, I believe. Interesting too that the this meeting, Sam and I, they were there for an hour and a quarter. We think it was window dressing because no one asked for our name, no one took our name, and nobody made any notes after only an hour and a quarter of anything we or anyone else said. Isn't that unusual that this is supposed to be a public information gathering session? We believe the main reason for the upgrade of that road is access to that site. Because, uh, as Boris said, it was a done deal. Okay, so that's our submission. How many of you can relate to that? Yep. Okay. So what's your message for the Queensland government on that? Oh, Sam? Stop no quarry. No quarry. Come on, folks, let's hear it. No quarry. No quarry. No quarry. No Thank you. That's the message we want to get through. Marsha now back over to Tony. And he's going to conduct a session and take some questions from the floor and give Christine a chance to respond. Uh, thanks Rob, and uh, as Rob said, we only found out this information in the last couple of weeks and um, I must admit when um, I heard about it, I, I, I thought we had been misinformed or we had done, uh, our searches were incorrect, but uh, I don't think so now. I think we, uh, we've been set up big time. Um, so what we did last week, we, we visited um, Christine Smith, who's the um, uh, Labor representative and elected member for uh, the the seat of Burley, and we presented our findings to Christine Smith and Christine, who has uh, shown support uh, for the uh, Quarry Action Group, uh, Christine said that she would go away and conduct her own investigation. So, uh, Christine, I'll, I'll hand it over to you now, and, and you can tell us what you found. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. Okay, good evening everyone. As Tony said, I'm the state member for Burley. Uh, the group did come to see me last week or the week before, I'm not sure, and presented what we've just seen tonight. For most of it, I have to admit I was not aware, I had not seen that sort of a presentation. I was at the community cabinet at Canindra Bar when the group met with the treasurer and the Lord Lady General. The quarry is not in the Burley electorate but because it's so important to me, although I had parliamentary commitments tonight, I have come down here because I think this is a very important meeting and we certainly need to discuss it. <laughs> Despite being a member of the government, I'm not here to defend the quarry, I mean that's indefensible. I need to tell you that I am probably as passionate as any one of you about this quarry not going ahead. Of the 9,200 signatures, mine is also on that petition. I have made it clear to members of the government, to the new treasurer, this is not something that is required, wanted, or should be imposed on the Talabuntra Valley or the residents of this area. I don't know how many times I can say that. What I cannot do is promise you that it will not go ahead. I have never, in my 11 years as a member, made a promise that I cannot personally keep. I believe I'm here to represent you, to pass on your feelings about the quarry, but I would never promise to do something if I am not 
able to carry it out. Now, as you heard earlier, eventually the federal government will have a say in this and that's probably where the decision will ultimately be made. We are going into an election and of course it becomes the silly season. So we all go out and, and say things that we may not be able to carry out. I think candidates who are not part of the government, who are not currently in the parliament, can make promises and can make statements that they don't have to back up because they are not in a position to do that. I will never do that. I will not promise you something I cannot. I will only promise you that I will work as hard as anyone else to keep this quarry out of the valley. I have a personal interest. My grandchildren go to school here at St Andrews. I don't want them being schooled next to a quarry, as you don't. You don't want to be living next to a quarry. I fully understand that, and I will not accept what is proposed by Borrell. Yes, Borrell have been to see me a number of times, as they have with other members, and they state their case. They are very professional about it. They gave me a DVD that I could have brought along tonight to show you. I didn't think it was appropriate to do that. I might give Sam a copy and he can have a look at it see what he thinks and he may choose to show it at some other time. I don't think Borrell would come along to a meeting that, that is, is not a protest meeting, but it's a meeting of people expressing their concern. I don't think I'll find anyone here tonight who supports the quarry. It would be very surprised if I did and probably you couldn't put your hand up if you did. It's a very important issue. I don't know how many more times I can say that to Sam and the guys, that I can say it to the Treasurer. We have to stop this quarry. It is a long-term project. It probably won't come online until well after I'm out of this job. But if we don't start fighting it now, it will be too late. As we heard earlier, we have to keep up the momentum. We have to keep going. Some people will come to me and say, what's the point in complaining one person can't change it? Perhaps one person can't change it, but it takes one person to start and to build the momentum, to get everybody on board. You need to contact your local members. You need to clearly say, and I know the petition is very important, but don't just rely on the petition. It needs to be a campaign that is ramping up, and I'm sure Sam and Tony and Rob are ramping it even further. You cannot give up. We have to keep going. I don't have answers to questions that the guys put to me last week. I have submitted them and I'm still waiting for a response. What I can offer is a meeting, a personal meeting with the Treasurer, with the Coordinator General, if that's considered appropriate. For someone to call the group, maybe Sam and Tony and Lorraine, Rob, to come up to lay all this on the table, to show the Treasurer and other principal advisors what is involved, what they maybe not know themselves. And I think I would have to say that you can't know everything. I can't know everything. They probably. Often you rely on advice you get from, from senior people. It may be that that advice is twisted. It may be that Sam needs to sit down with the Treasurer and put it all on the table say, so this is what we think. Now, defend it, or tell us we're wrong, or else listen to us and, and close this down. There are many sites where, the, where a quarry could be expanded or built. The Talabadra Valley is certainly not one of those, and I will fight as far as I can to make sure that it doesn't go ahead, but I need your support, and I know that's there, and we just have to keep fighting. Thank you. Thanks for that, Christine, and um, we will take you up on that offer to visit all those people as soon as possible because we want to get right in their ear and tell them what's been going on. Uh, just for a, a little bit of balance, um, I'd like to invite Michael Hart to come to the uh, microphone. Michael is the uh, candidate for the seat of Burley, and uh, Michael may have some uh, other comments that uh, are relevant to this issue. Thanks, David. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who know me will know that I'm a, a man of very few words. Um, I'm not a politician. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to run for the seat of Burley to 
to represent you. And I think it's very important that uh, your representative is listening to your views. Now, I think I heard before, stop, didn't I? You don't want this quarry. That's what your representative has to take back to the government. Uh, Christine has rightly pointed out that, uh, that the coalition, uh, the opposition at the moment, is not in a position uh, to make any decisions on your behalf. That is the government's responsibility. And it is the government representative in this area's responsibility to know what's going on in their electorate. They should know about quarries, they should know about roads, they should know what's going on. So, as far as the LMP is concerned, you've already heard that Jan Stuckey, Ross Blakes, Karen Andrews are very supportive of the stop process and trying to get this story, uh, this quarry stopped. I am exactly the same as that. Uh, on a personal basis, I live in Skyline Terrace. Quarrel, uh, I've, I've, I've talked to Quarrel. Quarrel have told me that that is on the fringes of the, uh, of the affected area. I don't want to put down on the quarry. I don't want to be listening to trucks coming and going, and I don't want to be eating dirt, eating dust, uh, like, like uh, I can imagine you people feeling like. So it's, it's really important uh, that at the next election uh, that you elect an LNP government if you want to try and stop this quarry. So I, I do actually have the DVD that Warren uh, put out. If anybody would like to have a look at it, um, Sam's waving his hand up there. I don't know, again, if it's appropriate to show it tonight, but it does show some flyovers of different areas of Burley and how they will be affected by this quarry. So, again, I think it's pretty clear where the, where the LNP stands. Uh, I don't think this quarry needs to be here. It could be in a lot of other places, and if elected as your candidate, that's the position I'll be taking. Thank you.